Anyway, uh, on the right side there, that's just the amount of, of gasoline called gallon, gasoline gallon equivalents that have been displaced by all the clean cities coalitions around the country. And you can see in about 2005, we displaced a billion gallons. 2007, I think we hit about two billion and we're slowly making progress towards three billion. That's again, there's 86 coalitions around the country that do the same work that I do, which means that I am a great resource for you or for your city or for your city fleet manager. And that's what I do. I am a resource. Okay. Time for the right button. Okay. Here's the breakouts. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to spend too much time on this. I think this stuff's pretty obvious. Um, these are heavy duty vehicles. On the bottom it says where the data came from and that's a, that's a lie, it's a mistake. It's not a lie, it's a mistake. There's a difference I think, right? Uh, this data actually came from the city of Lakewood. This is Lakewood's estimates on how much, how much idling their refuse trucks do. And we, I know this because I helped them, I helped the city of Lakewood apply for a grant to retrofit their refuse trucks with what's called a diesel particulate filter. This was free money from the federal government to help them retrofit the mufflers, basically, so that, so that they don't pollute so much. Um, but that's how we found that data out. They estimate about four and a half hours a day spent idling. So I, I'll, I will go through once and find the laser on this thing. And that's just a regular pen. Here we go. All right. Okay. So basically, you can see annual idling, 1,200 hours. That's based on 260 operating days per year, which is basically, well, is, is five days per week at 4.6 hours a day. So the fuel consumption for a typical heavy-duty truck. What's a heavy-duty truck? A dump truck, a front-end loader, a refuse truck. These are all examples of heavy-duty trucks. These are the ones that typically, well, I'm, not typically, almost always are exclusively run diesel. Fuel at low idle, when you turn those things on, they're using about eight tenths of a gallon of fuel per hour. All the measurements are standardized on a per hour basis. Okay, so there you see in red the annual cost of idling, right? Below that in green, the practice based solution, which is turn off the engine. Okay, the estimates for this are based on the model policy that a few of us in this room helped to create. And the estimates on idling are based at 7.5 minutes per hour. Why is that? Well, the policy states you can't idle for more than five minutes in any one hour. However, if the temperature goes below 32 degrees, the operator needs to turn on the engine to heat the cab up, it's 10 minutes, okay? So 10 minutes per hour when the, when the weather's below 32, five minutes per hour basically all other times. There are, is an exemption way up high for the temperature. Why 7.5 minutes? Well, despite what people say, it really is, we have half of, our se half of our season here in Northeast Ohio is winter. And that's a beautiful thing. I love the snow. All right, so moving along here, you can see that the annual cost instituting that policy, so you're limiting idling, the cost then becomes $533. That's the cost versus $1,968. So it's a dramatic increase. You're saving almost $1,500 per year per vehicle. It's pretty dramatic. Um, the technology based solution down here, this one is a little bit different. Okay, and I just threw this up there for comparison. There are many devices that can be added onto a vehicle to reduce its idling. Okay, and one of those devices, or a lot of those devices, what they do is they help the driver maintain the, the amenities, such as heat and cooling, without idling the main engine. And typically, they're just very small motors. Okay, one, one type is called a direct fire heater that is often used on school buses. Why? To heat the cab so the vehicle doesn't need to idle. It makes a lot of sense. And you can see it's a, this, the direct fire heater uses about two tenths of a gallon per hour versus eight tenths. So you're saving a tremendous amount of fuel when you're using that. So we just plug the numbers from the top into the bottom here, and that right there, APU, stands for Auxiliary Power Unit. Those of us in this industry, that's, how we, that's kind of what we refer to this category of devices, Auxiliary Power Unit. It's a device that allows the driver to maintain amenities without using the primary engine. Okay, it's called an APU, Auxiliary Power Unit. So there, there you can see. Not much of a difference between these two numbers. What I would stress is there's no money involved with educating your drivers to turn off their engine. This, you're talking about somewhere between $600 and $1,000 per vehicle, but 
I'll make this announcement loud and clear. I hope everyone can hear me because I'm going to be talking about money now. There is a lot of money available right now from the state of Ohio and from the federal government to help you or your city retrofit their fleet to, to purchase devices like this direct fire heater or a diesel particulate filter, all sorts of things. Anything that basically reduces diesel emissions, there is a ton a ton of money for it right now, more than there's ever been in the history of the state. So there's a lot of money out there. And if you need help taking advantage of it, please come talk to me and I can help you out. So I've got one more slide here. I hope I can get this right. This sec, oh, you know what? I see, I add, forgot I added these little things in here. Well, that is fun. Woo, okay. Uh, so this is if one gas is at $4 per gallon, which, um, I forgot to say there's certainly a direct correlation between the economy, right, and transportation or fuel prices and the economy. When the economy tanked, what happened to fuel prices? They tanked. When the economy comes back, fuel prices. And there's probably going to be even more constraints on fuel prices if any kind of carbon cap and trade, CO2 cap and trade comes around. There's going to be even more constraints or additional fuel taxes. All these things are possible. So $4 per gallon gas, obviously, really enhances the equation here. Boy, I'm not too good at this. Uh, you can see it, this bottom one, you're, 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 we went from saving $1,500 to saving almost $3,000. So I mean, it's, and that's per vehicle per year. A city like Cleveland that probably has about 100 or so of these, probably more like 100, maybe 200 of these kind of vehicles, 200 times 5,000 or 4,000. Anyone want to do the math on there? Two times four, eighty, eight hundred thousand dollars. It's almost a million dollars. It's a dramatic, dramatic, dramatic change. So I got one more slide for you here, folks. You can see people giving me the hook face. <laughs> I, just kidding, just kidding. A little humor here. Um, and this is not a humorous issue. I tape is run out. Oh, the tape's running out. Okay, so this is for uh, light, du light duty vehicles is all this is for. Light duty vehicles typically idle less. These are the, maybe if you have a city fleet, you've got a car for the mayor maybe, or uh, maybe, you know, I, I don't know who, who in your city might, the, the police certainly have cars. The police are in a special case, right, because they've got a lot of equipment to power on the vehicle. Right now there actually is no hybrid that's capable of supporting police functions without turning the engine on. That's something that's highly requested by a lot of police departments, is a car that they can leave the engine off and have a battery take care of, you know, the sirens and the computers and all that stuff. Doesn't exist as of yet. But I am, uh, I think, just about done here. I think I did that fun little thing for you. Gosh darn it. Please. Okay, yeah, see, that, these are my numbers for uh, $4 per gallon gas. It's not quite as dramatic. But then again, a lot of fleets have a lot more light duty vehicles than they do heavy duty. So you, you, you definitely get that uh, multiplier effect. Anyway, that's me. No, that's not me. This is me. That's what I do. Um, and uh, you know, if folks, if your city needs help trying to what's called greening your fleet, creating a green fleet policy for future purchases, that's what I do. And I'd be happy to meet your fleet manager or your service director and work with them because, or help find money. Like I said, there's a ton of money out there right now for this stuff, so I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to step down. Thank you. There you go. Thanks, John. John does stand up also on the side. <laughs>